In this video, I'll introduce assemblies. An assembly follows a path, like a profile member does, but can be comprised of multiple parts. An assembly can have one or more profile members, or components placed at specific intervals along the path, or spans, which are objects that run between components. To see some examples, I'll first click this icon to open the assembly dialog. Then I'll click the search icon to open the assembly browser. The samples folder can be opened by clicking this icon. In addition to the samples here, there is a larger collection available in the 3D warehouse, which I'll cover farther on. The library folder icon opens the folder where the profile and assembly examples are located. The home folder is where my own assemblies will be saved by default, and I can set this folder in Profile Builder's Preferences. To get here, I'll choose Extensions, Profile Builder, Preferences. My home folders for both profiles and assemblies can be set here. Back to the Samples folder, I'll start with a simple example, this cavity wall. I'll select it to load into the assembly dialog. There are four ways I can view a preview of this assembly, horizontal, vertical, corner, and sloping. The orientation of the preview depends on the orientation of my model. I'll click Build Assembly, and just like with creating profile members, I can click Points to create the assembly. This is a simple assembly consisting of five profile members, block, insulation, brick, etc. Each has a start and end setback and lateral and vertical offsets. Each of these profiles follows the profile path. There are no components and no spans. For a slightly more complex example, I'll load the crash barrier assembly. There is just one profile member here, named Rail. I'll click Edit Profile to see its shape, material, junction style, etc. The rail is the part of this assembly that follows the path. In the Component tab, there is just one component, named Post. The definition name of this component is 6x6 Post. These are placed at 6 feet max, which means the spacing will be less if the path length dictates. These options control where posts are placed along the path. I'll click Build and create the barrier. As I move my mouse, new posts are added each time the spacing reaches 6 feet. Posts are evenly spaced along each section. When I open the Outliner, I can see the overall assembly, which contains a single profile member group called Rail and several 6x6 post components. For another example, I'll start with a line and arc to use as the path. I'll open the Samples folder again and bring in the picket fence. I'll use the Smart Path Selection tool to define the path and direction, and click Build Along Path. Just like with a profile member, if the path direction causes the assembly to face the wrong way, I can right-click the assembly and choose Profile Builder, Reverse Selected. In this case, there are two profile members, the top rail and bottom rail, which are identical in this case. There's one component, called Post, spaced at one foot max. If I want to replace this assembly with another one, I'll load the new assembly, in this case, Fence Assembly 8. When the picket fence is selected, I can click Apply Assembly Attributes to make the switch. This is an example of an assembly that has no profile members. There is no single profile shape that follows the entire path. This assembly consists of one component, the posts, and a span that contains two objects. The span runs between the post components, and each span consists of a sub-assembly, which is the three inner posts, and a component, which is the curved fence boards. For another span example, I'll switch this fence with the hanging chain rail. Again, there are no profile members, one post component, and one chain span, which is a sub-assembly. The chain can have a slope and has an 8-inch sag between supports. To see what each of these options does, I can hover over the option name for a graphic illustration. The sub-assembly consists of two components, a horizontal link and a vertical link. In addition to the 30 assemblies in the samples folder, there are more available in the 3D warehouse. I'll open the 3D warehouse with this icon and enter mind.site as part of the author name. I'll click any model thumbnail to see its details, then click the author link in the top right corner. From here, I'll open collections and open the Profile Builder 3 assemblies. 
If I want easy access to this collection later, I'll make sure I'm signed in, then I'll click the heart icon. As long as I'm signed into my 3D Warehouse account, I can click my username or avatar and choose My 3D Warehouse. From there, I can open my Liked Collections. I'll go back to the collection. I'll click the download icon for the bleachers assembly and load it directly into my model. To load the assembly attributes into the assembly dialog, I'll use the Get Assembly Attributes eyedropper. Now I can erase the imported bleachers and build out a set of new bleachers along a path. In this example, I have a terrain surface with a 3D path along the surface created with a drape sandbox tool. I have the picket fence assembly loaded and I'll use Smart Path Selection to select the entire path, clicking points along the way. I'll click Build Along Path and the fence follows the 3D contour. Now say I want to make changes to this fence. I have the bottom rail profile member in the dialog and I can change its up-down offset from 6 inches off the ground to 2 inches. To implement this change, I need to select the assembly, then click Apply Assembly Attributes. I can also click Edit Profile for this member, change its profile height to 6 inches, and its material to wood. I'll click OK and apply again. I'll do the same to change the top rail to wood. To make changes to the post, I'll open the Component tab. Here I could change properties such as setbacks, rotation and offset, etc. I'll make the spacing farther apart, 3 feet max. To make changes to the posts themselves, I'll need to open one of the post components. I'll change the sharp tip to a rounded one, make the post a bit taller, and assign new materials. Now if I want to save this assembly, I'll click the Save icon. Because this fence was edited from the picket fence in the Samples folder, the new fence goes in the same folder by default. I can't save it here, so I'll save it in my Documents folder, which is my Home folder. I'll call this Wood Fence. Now in a new model, I'll open my Home folder and find the assembly I saved. In the next video, I'll cover how to add profile members to an assembly.